Hi, I'm Abby. Today's tutorial has a little bit of a twist to it. I am going to ruin this machine. Well, I've set it, I've calibrated it, it's working perfectly as it should do out of the box. So what I want to do is show you how to make it go wrong so that you know how to make it go right. And I think that's an easy way to explain things to you and make you understand why things have happened when you've left it alone for two minutes while you've gone to check on the baby and you've come back and suddenly it's not performing as it should do. So if that's the kind of video you want to watch, I'm a sewing teacher. I also am an engineer. I fix machines. Then do hit that subscribe button and we just need to get started. Let's crack on. All right, I'm going to show you this machine working perfectly. So let's pop that in, grab the pedal. And you can see I've got good tension, good stitching, good cutting, no problems with that machine. Right, first thing I'm going to do is let's ruin the timing. All right, so I've got an Allen key here and the first thing I'm going to do is uninstall those needles. So just turn the handle towards you and you've replaced the needle. It was be working fine before and I'm going to, all I'm going to do is just bring that needle down, just one of them, doesn't matter which one. Okay, so that's the good one. And if I mark something on there, okay. We've got a big tick on that one because that's the good one. And that's the one we're going to use to compare the rest of our work to. All right, so we'll do another row of stitching. Okay. So what's happened this time is I've brought the needle down a little bit further down, just ever so slightly, but it's still in there nice and securely. I've got no stitching at all. So you can see some stitching happening, but not enough. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll put those needles back in fully and so I'll just unwind it and just make sure I put them back in. The thing about this overlocker is the thread map shows all the threads separate from each other. So there's no need for your threading to go in a particular order. But as you've just seen, I've had to re-thread the machine. So I've had to re-thread the looper threads, which is fine because they are separate from each other. But inside there, if I remove this foot, okay, we've done it. Right, you can see that threads are caught around the finger there. So this finger that sits in there for the rolled hem, the blue thread is trapped around there. So what you do, is when you're sewing, when you thread up your machine again, what I want you to do is just grab a pair of scissors like you do on your sewing machine and swipe under your foot and grab all four threads or three threads, however many you're using, so that they are now separate from each other. Can you see? And then you can put them underneath. And with them not being tangled up, it's much easier for you to sew, having to not re-thread. So I didn't need to remove the foot, it was just to demonstrate what was going on. So you don't need to remove the foot when you do this. Because I know it's a tricky foot to put back on in this machine. And it's very peculiar because you've got to press it down. Okay, and then make sure all four threads or three threads, however many you're using, are pulled to the back again, like that. Okay, and there we go. Back to good stitching again. 
Okay, the next fold I'm going to create is going to be inside here again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove just one of the threads. I'm going to follow this guide, the blue map, and I'm just going to take this thread from underneath this looper. It's like the thread take up lever. It helps to yank the thread into the right position there. So if I remove these threads here, and just remove them from there and not have that threaded up properly. Let's see what happens. So we're back to good thread on there. And if we stitch. Okay. Can you see what's happening on the back? We've got very bad looping going on. So the under looper, so that's a lower looper. That's our lower loop. So that's our lower looper. The lower looper is not threaded up correctly. And if I put those back now, just in these two guides alone, Let's just make sure we pull some up from the top. Just make that taut again. And then I'll show you what happens. better isn't it that's probably just messed up because i i pulled the thread a bit too slack so just make sure it's in there okay that's much better all right, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm actually going to adjust the tension and I'm going to give myself a random tension of six and maybe two and maybe five. And that's what I'm convinced works on my machine. Let's play with that. And you can see there that I'm not forming proper loops. My needle tensions are completely messed up. Not just one, but both. I didn't affect this needle tension, but both needle tensions have been affected because the loopers have all been adjusted badly. So the front looper is appearing on the back and the back looper is not forming very well at all. So let's put it back all to factory settings on four. And let's see what difference we get. There we go. Back to our good stitching again. All right. So now what I'm going to do, let's get rid of that one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the thread out of the tension spring. Oops. So if I open this up and if I pull this out, so it's no longer sitting in the tension disc. Can you see that? But it's fed through. So I'm just going to pull it back again. So I've got nice taut um, thread but it's not, can you see, it's not sitting in the tension discs fully. Let's see what happens. There we go. So it doesn't look like it's a huge fault, 
not a huge problem. And if we just check, yeah, it's still quite loose in there. So what I need to do now is I'm going to hold, press here, and I'm going to just pull on the thread, make sure it goes in fully into the tension discs. I'm going to try that again. And there we go. It works. So these are the kind of things you need to look out for. So if you've not put your needle in properly, your timing goes out because the loopers can't meet and your threads come undone every time. So just check that you're hitting the top of the spot, uh, the stopper. You see, right there, you'll have a stopper on your machine. Make sure you're hitting your needles to that stopper. They do have one further down than the other because you've got to remember the loopers are working part of a circle so they don't hit a flat surface they're hitting a circle so they will be at different angles if you don't thread up the looper threads fully using all the guides correctly they won't work and if you don't make sure and if you don't have your threads in the tension dials fully and it was easy to fix that problem that's going to cause you problems as well. So those are three really common problems that occur when you're surging. So wasn't that easy? I've shown you three possible reasons why your machine acts up. These are problems that we don't realise we're doing, mistakes we've made. And you might be a proficient sewer. So believe me, I've done it time and time again. And it's good to know what causes these problems so you're saving yourself for having a stressful evening trying to sew something while the baby's asleep and it will save you a lot of money sending it away for repair look out for those mistakes that you might be making when things go wrong and hopefully i've saved you a bucket load of money click thumbs up if you like that video subscribe if you love it it'll be great to see you next time take care